What's going on everyone? This is Vince from Life with Vince Lou, and today I want to talk about the other side of tracking your macros. So if you don't know what tracking your macros is, it's basically calorie counting, but calories are actually further broken down into protein, carbs, and fats. So everything that you eat is comprised of some sort of ratio between one, two, or all three of protein, carbs, and fats. You also have alcohol, but that's kind of in its own subcategory. And there are a ton of benefits, but there's also a some drawbacks as well that I've personally experienced. So let's first start with the benefits. When you track your macros, so this means that you are calorie counting literally anything and everything that you eat. So that oil that you use, that creamer in your coffee, and you can get pretty down to the T with exactly what's going into your body. And that's what it is. When you track your macros, you know exactly what's going into your body. You know how many calories, how many grams of protein, how many grams of carbs, how many grams of fat. And that has benefits just because if you know exactly what's going into your body, then you can use that data or you can use that information to better plan for your fitness goals because there is an optimal and optimal is debatable but there is let's say this optimal range of what you should get per category in order to build muscle in order to maintain muscle when you're cutting uh, in order to feel better overall there are these numbers that you should be hitting in order to get to your fitness goals. And a lot of personal trainers and people in the fitness space will actually recommend you to track your macros. And it makes sense because if you know exactly what's going into your body, then you can manipulate other factors like your workout, the timing of your workout, your cardio sessions to get the best results possible. And personally, I'm a huge advocate for tracking your macros. I've been tracking my macros for about five or six years now, but it does come with unintended consequences for a lot of people and this is what personally what i experienced and one of the unintended consequences is that i've actually developed a bad relationship with food and i can definitely lie and say that i have a great relationship with food now but honestly i don't it's a lot better than what what it was before but there are still foods that i won't eat to this day or it really hurts my brain and it really hurts like a little bit in my soul when I eat something and I'm not 100% sure how many calories or what the macros are in a certain thing. I'll give you an example. Like my girlfriend, she baked cookies the other day and obviously she's baking these cookies and she's putting butter in it and she's putting this and she's putting that. She's not really measuring anything and these cookies turn out to be like fat cookies <laughs> and they taste great but every time I eat it, I'm like, ah, gosh, I don't, I just don't know. And I kind of don't want to eat it because of that. I would rather just eat packaged cookies that might not taste as good, but I know that Chips Ahoy cookies, three of those hard mini cookies have 160 calories in them. And I, I'd rather eat that. I don't want to eat something that I don't know exactly what's in it. And if you think it's bad now, it was a lot worse when I first started. Because when I first started and I was learning, I was tracking everything, I was scanning everything, I was weighing everything. And that's something that you have to do. You have to weigh pretty much everything that you eat unless it comes already, like has the macros with them. Like if you eat a protein bar, it'll say 210 calories and it'll break down the macros. So you don't have to weigh that. But everything else that you make from scratch, you pretty much have to weigh. So you have to weigh your rice, you have to weigh that teaspoon of oil that you're using, you have to weigh that piece of fruit, you have to weigh everything, literally everything. And that's what I still do to this day. Pretty much I weigh anything and everything that I can. A lot of times I'll eyeball it now because I've been doing it for so long. So I'll know like generally ballpark. But when you first start, you can get so fixated on these numbers that you don't want to eat certain foods because you realize that that has X amount of calories or that has X amount of certain macros. And if I eat that, then I can't eat this. And because of this, you can develop a pretty bad relationship with food. And that was the case for me. For the first year or two, I was bringing my scale everywhere that I went. There were times where I went to Korean barbecue 
and I would literally weigh all the things I ate. I would weigh my rice. I would only eat brisket because it was a lot easier to track just brisket than eat everything else. So I was only eating brisket and I was weighing every single piece and I added up at the end of the night and then I cut myself off at a certain point. And when I would go to family parties, I really wouldn't eat much because if I didn't know what was in my food, it would kind of make my, just my stomach kind of churn and my brain hurt and it just made me really uncomfortable to eat foods that I didn't know what the macros were or, how, or at least how many calories were in it and it took me a long time to get over this I would say about two or three years and you lighten up as you go on with tracking your macros but that first initial year especially that first initial year i had a terrible relationship with food and even today i wouldn't say i like it's recovered fully and i'll just eat anything that i want there are still a lot of foods that i won't eat because i understand the macros and the calories of that certain food so something that's really helped me have a better relationship with food is my mindset and my realization that it's okay to go over your macros, especially at like family parties, at special occasions, at birthdays, those days are okay. And one strategy that I utilize, if I know I am going to a family party or a birthday where I am going to be drinking, where I'm going to be eating, I like to call it limit the damage. So that day I'll intermittent fast until the time to eat. I'll do extra cardio in the morning because at that point I'm just trying to limit the damage and still have fun and still eat and drink whatever I want and be celebratory. And for those people who are thinking about tracking your macros, just understand this side of it. Yes, you are going to get great results, but there are repercussions that you may or may not want. And it's I think it's a little bit balance of both for me personally. But if you're first starting out in your fitness journey, you can start with intuitive eating. I would highly suggest intuitive eating before tracking your macros because you can still get pretty far with intuitive eating. Intuitive eating is just eating intuitively, so making better conscious decisions overall. So instead of eating a lot of junk food, you're eating more fruits and vegetables. Instead of eating sour cream and cheese, don't put that in your California burrito. Uh, don't eat fried things, you know, just consciously making better decisions. And that is my perspective. This is all my personal opinion and my personal journey. Maybe you can relate. Let me know down in the comments below. Have you dealt with this? Maybe I'm kind of on, on an island by myself. Uh, what do you think about intuitive eating? Just let me know. So hope you all enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking along this far please give it a thumbs up if you like the video if you haven't already subscribed to my channel make sure you hit that subscribe button iron that see y'all soon